Yo ho ho! Here we are with chapter 7, lesson number 8, Curve Sketching. Now something we have been doing every Friday night is sketching graphs. I know everybody loves doing that. But what we can now do is apply our knowledge of polynomials in order to help us sketch a graph. So, I want to do an example on that. So example one, given y equals x cubed minus x squared minus 8x plus 12. First of all, I'll find the x and y intercepts of the graph. In other words, where it's crossing the x and y axis. Part B, find any stationary points. And part C, everybody's favourite, sketch the graph. So first of all, with part A, we want to find the x and the y intercepts. So you know, the graph crosses the y axis when x equals 0. So we replace x with 0. So y would equal 0 cubed minus 0 squared minus 8 times 0 plus 12, which is just 12, meaning it's going to cross the y-axis at the point 0, 12. So we found out the first part. After that, we want to find out where it crosses the x-axis. So the graph crosses the x-axis, this time when y equals 0. So you know you can replace y with 0. So 0 would equal x cubed minus x squared minus 8x plus 12. And that's equal to zero. But how would you find the value of x? What would you use? Well done, James. Perfectly right. You would be using your knowledge of polynomials. What we need to do is we need to factorise that. And to factorise that, what you need to do is you need to divide it by a factor. So you can think, right, well, I want to replace x with 1 or negative 1, 2 or negative 2, 3 or negative 3, in order to find out what is going to give you zero. So you can now evaluate f of 1, f of negative 1, f of 2, and so on. If you work out f of 1, you don't get 0. If you work out f of negative 1, you don't get 0. You'd have to go to the side, work that out. However, if you work out f of 2, it does give you 0. So from here, you can set this up with your L shape. Write down the coefficients of x cubed, x squared, x to the power of 1, x to the power of 0. So we've got 1, negative 1, negative 8, and 12. And then start working your way along. So, if you put down 2 here, bring 1 down, multiply by the 2, so you multiply and across, add the columns, so we get 1, multiply across, so you get 2, add the columns, so we've got negative 6, multiply across, it's negative 12, and if you add them, you do get 0. Since then, you've got 0 here, since the remainder is 0, you can say that, remember how you get the factor, if we know that 2 is going to be a root, it's going to be x minus that number, so you can say x minus 2 is going to be a factor. So, you could split this up. You can say that the x cubed minus x squared minus 8x plus 12 will be x minus 2 times something. And the way you get the coefficients of the next part is you look at the numbers you have down here. So, if this is x cubed, this will be 1x squared plus 1x minus 6. From there, see if you can factorise x squared plus x minus 6. Well, you can. It gives you x plus 3x minus 2. Therefore, you will split it up fully, factorise it fully, so you've got x minus 2, x plus 3, and then x minus 2. Meaning then, if x minus 2 was equal to 0, x would equal 2. And if x plus 3 was equal to 0, x would equal a negative 3. And if x minus 2 was equal to 0, well, we've got that. We've got x equals a min x equals 2. We already have that, so you don't need to write it down twice. However, what this does mean is if you have it twice, it means it's a repeated root, which means the graph is probably going to have a turning point at 2. However, we'll look into that at part B for the stationary points. All you know just now is that there it crosses the x-axis at the point 2, 0 and negative 3, 0. Part B. Find the stationary points. How do you get the stationary points? Well, remember from the differentiation chapter, stationary points occur when dy by dx equals 0. So, from here you need to differentiate. So differentiate y with respect to x, so dy by dx would equal, bring the power down, take 1 off the power, so you would have a 3x squared minus 2x minus 8, and that would equal 0 because stationary points occur when dy by dx equals 0. How would you work out the values of x? Brilliant, well done, you'd factorise that. So if you factorise, you get 3x plus 4, bracket x minus 2, set each bracket equal to 0, solve for x, and x would be negative 4 thirds, or x equals 2. 
What do we need to do after that though? Olivia? Well done. Nature table, you got it. So set up your nature table. So you've got the values of X, pick a point just before, pick a value just before and just after. Sub it into dy by dx and that'll tell you if the gradient is positive or negative there. If you do that, if you sub in a point just before negative four thirds, then sub that into dy by dx, you will get a positive number out, which means it's a positive gradient, the graph is sloping up there. If you sub negative four thirds in in place of x into dy by dx, you will get zero. So that is going to be your turning point or your point of inflection. And if you sub in a value bigger than negative four thirds, then you will get a negative, meaning there's a negative gradient. Because you'd have two stationary points, you need two nature tables. So set up another nature table and this time sub in two. So pick a value just before two and a value just after two. If you pick a value just before, the graph is sloping down. If you sub in two, then you get zero. And if you pick a value after, the graph will slope up. If you want to look over any more of this, just have a look at the differentiation chapter because this is quite quick. We are asked for the stationary points. What we've done is we've found the X values of the stationary points. So how would you then get the Y value? What would you do with that, Aaron? Perfect, you would sub it in. So from here, you can say when X equals negative four thirds, well, replace X in the original equation with negative four thirds, and you can find Y. Why? Because we're asked for that. So, subbing that in, you end up getting 18 and 14 20 sevenths. Lovely number. And do the same thing with two. If you sub two in to the original equation, you could work out y. So do two cubed minus two squared and so on. If you do that, you end up getting zero, which means there will be a maximum turning point at negative four thirds and 18 and 14 20 sevenths. And this one here, when x was two, that was a minimum. So there'll be a minimum at to zero. So that is us with the stationary points. Last but not least, part C, the bit we've all been waiting for. We have gathered this information. We know where the graph is crossing the y-axis, woo, the x-axis, woo, woo, and the turning points, woo, woo. So we can graph it. And if you graph that, you will end up with something that looks like that. You can see it's crossing the y-axis at 0, 12. You can see it's crossing the x-axis at the point 2, 0 and negative 3, 0. There is a maximum turning point at negative 4 thirds, 18, um, 14, 20 sevenths. And there is a minimum turning point at 2, 0. So you know the slope of the graph and what it looks like. And that is your answer. Woo! Try some of these on your own. Don't leave them all for Friday night. Try exercise 7i on page 143. But really, you're wanting to use your knowledge of polynomials and differentiation to sketch the graph as best you can. Good luck. Have fun. Graphs. Yeah.